Dennis Dodd is with us here, CBS Sports College football writer. Dennis Tiki and Tierney, how are you? How are you guys? Thanks for having me on again. No doubt about it. Um, boy, oh boy. If you had to pick, let's see, of the three games that I, that I highlighted, tonight, tomorrow in Michigan, and Saturday between Louisville and Clemson, Saturday night, which of those three games will most directly impact the Final Four and when it's all said and done, do you think? I think Clemson-Louisville because Louisville's kind of the interloper that no one really thought of as a top-four team before the season. It was Clemson-FSU in November was going to decide the ACC and the winner goes to the playoff. Well, by all intents and purposes right now, Louisville looks like the best team in that conference, and Lamar Jackson looks like the best team and the best player in the country. So will that prove to be true tomorrow night? I don't know. You know, there's a nightmare scenario in that division where all three of those top teams could finish with one loss and it's broken. The tie has broken the week of, uh, of pick them by sports source analytics. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> we saw that CFP employees oh, from God. the metrics. So, uh. Yeah, I, I, this one has the most at stake to me. Yeah, what about the game tonight? Stanford and Washington, two Pac-12 uh, squads that are both in the top ten. Obviously, Washington looks really good statistically, even though they've had an easy early schedule. Mm-hmm. Arizona pushed them and rushed for 308 yards. We know Christian McCaffrey uh, had his way with them last year. What do we expect from, from this contest is, is one of these Pac-12 teams tries to position themselves well for you know what will be the playoff conversation down the road. Well, this is a prove-it game for Washington. They came in, I thought, really highly overranked and overrated. They were the, the golden child in the off season after a 7-6 and six season. They had a returning quarterback, a good defense. But as sooner or later, you have to prove it on the field. In the first three games, they played nobody. Portland State, I think Rutgers was in there. It was really, really bad. Then they went to their first home game last week against Arizona, and had to win in overtime and gave up 28 points. So uh, we shall see how they play against, you know, the team that was the overwhelming favorite, frankly, going in, Stanford. Now, but Stanford goes on the road without their two starting corners and their fullback. How does that impact Christian McCaffrey against an emerging Washington team with Jake Browning, uh, number three in pass efficiency, 14 touchdowns, two interceptions, getting better every week? I think the thing to watch here, and I picked Stanford, nobody – He's really with me tonight. Mm. Stanford has the ability to hold the ball for 40 minutes with Christian McCaffrey and the double and the monster set that they use. I would watch that. I would watch them to drain the emotion out of this game and win this 20 to 13. But whoever comes out of it, I think, is is the odds-on favorite to win the Pac-12. Uh, no doubt, they, they seem to be the two teams getting a little separation. Talking to Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports College football writer. Uh, big week five around the nation beginning tonight. He's with us here on Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. Uh, Dennis, I don't know how much you, time you'd actually need to come up with a team for each of the, um, you know, for the criteria I'm about to throw at you. But do you have a team that that has obviously underachieved to you? One team that really jumps out, and one team that might be on borrowed time that has a good feeling and might have a good ranking, but you don't think can sustain it. Well, I think on the first on the first uh, set, I think Notre Dame. Obviously, no one expected the defense to be this bad. Uh, they fired their defensive coordinator. Three coaches fired Sunday. One of them was uh, obviously Brian Van Gorder, the de- defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. And I think they've got to be on upset alert going to Syracuse this year. You know, Syracuse can't stop there. But guess what? Notre Dame can't either. And in the shootout game, I could see Dino Babers and the Orange winning that. So they're they're out of any meaningful discussion of the playoff or even a New Year's Six Bowl. And that has to be disappointing going into week five. And then what What was the second category? I, I well, what, which team do you think maybe uh, has an inflated perception, kind of live it on borrowed time, has a nice ranking, but you don't think they can sustain it? I, I think Michigan. Um, really? Again, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, again, they haven't played anywhere. They played Penn State. That was an impressive victory last week. But I don't know how good Penn State is. Oh, they're not good. Guys, they don't go on the road. They don't play a road game till next week. At not, and, and that's at Rutgers. So, yeah, I, I think they're very, very good. I, you know, Wisconsin has the ability to beat them. Mm. I just, If we're talking about a team that can win the Big Ten and challenge for a, a playoff, I, I thought that – and I'm not taking anything away from last year. I thought Jim Harbaugh did a great job. I don't think he had the roster to win ten games. He won ten games. Yeah. He's a fantastic coach. I just think – let's see them actually get smacked in the mouth, which really they haven't, really. 
yet this year. They will. They will tomorrow. So we'll see. Yeah, no, that's true. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports uh, college football writer. Hey, Dennis, there's two top uh, 25 teams that are, have three and one records that I'm not sold on. I need you to tell me if mm-hmm. they are good. One is number 12 ranked Florida State. Uh, and the other one is Georgia, who, you know, sn- snuck by early, and uh, then they got beat up by o- Old Miss. Where where are either of these two teams? Well, Florida State, I think, could win out, but you've got to ask yourself, will, will the selection committee reward Florida State when their one loss, they gave up the most points in their history and lost by 43 at Louisville? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's a distant memory by then. Ohio State lost in the second week to you know Virginia Tech a couple of years mm-hmm. ago and still made it. So you know I I don't know I mean I I don't know if they can run the table because of the depth I mentioned in the ACC, and then you mentioned Georgia. I think Georgia's in a rebuilding phase. They're starting a true freshman quarterback. I had someone close to the team, not on the team, but close to the team, tell me that it's it's the worst. Um, talent they've had in 25 years. I, I raise my oh, eyebrows wow. because I have nothing to compare that to, but yeah. this person does. Um, and they're good enough to rally and beat Missouri in the last seconds, but also up and down enough to get blown out by Ole Miss, which has just been lost to uh, blown a big lead to Alabama. So I think this is going to be an up and down season for Georgia, and it will rest on the arm of Jacob Eason. I also picked them to beat Tennessee this week because Tennessee's played three quarters this season. They, they the second quarter against Virginia Tech, twenty four to nothing, and then the second half against Florida last week, thirty five to seven. Other than that, they've been outscored seventy seven to seventy two, and they're going on the road for a significant SEC game. Yeah, I was going to say uh, Tiki had those two teams. I would have tossed Tennessee in there as well. I didn't quite know the the, the split disparity in terms of, of of points that you just laid on us. That's a good stat. But yeah. just having watched them, I know that they're. You know, a little vulnerable. Uh, Dennis, final thing for me, how does your Heisman, you know, outside of Lamar Jackson right now, clearly at number one, how do you have two and three shaken out right now for you? Uh, McCaffrey somewhere in there, Jabril Peppers um, at Michigan. I've never heard Jim Harbaugh gush about a player like he has continually about Jabril Peppers, which which he should. He's fantastic. He, he's Charles Woodson plus. Uh, he does more things than Charles Woodson. I think there's, there's obviously a way – to get him the highs, and I think they're going to feed him the ball. I think you'll see a lot of him tomorrow. Uh, and being at Michigan and do, being the Swiss Army knife and having that tradition of Charles Woodson, I think he's got a great chance to win it. But, you know, it's early. Lamar Jackson has been handed the trophy in uh, in September. I remember Leonard Fournette had done the same thing last year, and he didn't even make New York and had a fantastic season, but didn't even get to New York, so we'll see. Uh, I mean, I, I'm just kind of messing around. You say he's been handed the trophy. He's kind of grabbed the trophy. I don't know if he's been. <laughs> yeah, he, right. he's, yeah, and he's yeah, seized it. Yeah. You know, he's been absolutely phenomenal. All right, man, so we put you down. You're going to roll with Stanford, kind of against the uh, the conventional thought, but we'll see a big yep. one tonight, and we'll keep reading you. Thank you for the time, Dennis. Appreciate it, pal. Be good, Dennis. All right, thanks, guys. There Appreciate you go. It. There he is. Make sure you read him, cbssports.com. Dennis Dodd. 